Hello everyone, this is Sonia from Sonia's Quilts and Embroidery. It's August the 22nd here in North Alabama. It's August 22nd anywhere. But anyway, uh, this is the baby quilt that we're going to be making today. I want to give you a close-up shot of this one that I just finished. And this is just the top. So if you see it kind of hanging kind of loosely like that, that's because it has not been quilted. It'll be a whole different look once it's been quilted um you have geometric shapes uh you have your subject which is the giraffes um and then all the the small blocks come together to make this larger pattern it's interesting to do a block like this so that uh when you get finished by the way that you lay your blocks out it creates a whole nother whole nother look so we have the the big squares with the um, uh, on point with the um, um, all the different widths of fabric that all come together. Which you know this this is one. Let's see this down here all the way to the middle of the square down. All that is one block. So this makes four blocks. The quilt actually consists of nine blocks. So that's a you know that's a pretty easy baby quilt nine blocks I mean wow um, the actual small blocks finish when you get those put together they'll be ten inches but once you get um, the four blocks put together the four blocks together will be about nineteen by nineteen so but we'll act, after you sew them together and add you know take out your seam allowances and everything that's about the size it'll be all right let's go to the sewing machine let me show you how i put this thing together okay i hope we can see good well uh here i got did get my lock fixed above my machine i may have to try to talk somebody into being my cameraman uh one day because i there's different aspects of making a quilt block that it would be more convenient if you could see uh the needle uh, and you know sometimes that's hard to do when you are working by yourself but anyway um, we're gonna be making this block this actual this block today um, it's in it's gonna be kind of a Victorian feel to it and this is what the finished block looks like but um, we're gonna make another one of these I'm gonna show you how exactly I put this together and then um, you can just and, and plus if you see uh, nine blocks at all sewn together it comes out 29 inches and a half by 29 inches and a half you can carry this on and make a twin you can make a full a queen a king you can make whatever size you want depending on how many blocks that you do so this is going to be a Victorian look to it and this is the finished block and let's get started and let me show you exactly how I made this. First of all, I showed you in the other video that we are going to be using Tearaway Stabilizer um, to do this project. This is 10 inches by 10 inches and the reason that is is because that my stabilizer comes in 10 inch rolls. So I just cut 10 inches off and I have a 10 inch block. Then I showed you in the other video, the first video, that we lay our ruler from point to point at the one quarter inch mark and we draw a line. Now that is a little that is a little bit more than a quarter inch there, but that I guess that just um, depends on how, how thick your pencil your pencil or your pen or whatever you use. You can even use an ink pen to do this. Because we're gonna be getting rid of this at the end of it. But always be consistent. I cannot stress that strong enough whenever you are doing quilting. You know, if you don't do a quarter inch seam, that's fine. But just be consistent. Do whatever if whatever seam you're doing and you know and, and just rest it rest your fabric right along the edge of your foot and that would be an easy way to be consistent. So I'm not a big stickler for the quarter inch. Uh, I'm sure there are some patterns that require a forty uh, a one fourth inch um, seam allowance but uh, the things that I show you I just rest my fabric right along the uh, right side of the, outs the right side outside of my actual um, foot on my machine 
So, let's, I've got some strips cut here. Let me lay this down. Um, I've got some strips cut here. I've got some two inch. These are all in two inch strips. These are in two and a half inch strips. And then I have got this two inch strip. I've also got it in a three inch. And I've got the other two prints in. I've got the two large prints. I'm sorry. The two large prints. I've got those in three inch strips. You can cut your strips as wide or as narrow as you would like. It doesn't matter. Uh, that's completely up to you. But the important thing to get the shape, to get that geometric look, is to all to take your first square and use it as your blueprint and copy it, make it over and over and over. So um, this seam right here, hope you can see that. This seam right here is the line that we actually drew on our paper and we're going to take our paper and we are going to keep the line that we drew. Every time we make one of these blocks, we're going to keep that line to the left of this corner. Now, you can keep it to the right of the corner. Just be consistent. Always do it the same way every time. So on this square, we have this pink lacy looking fabric. It's down first, so we're going to situate it where it's down and this one is on top. Always do it the same, unless you don't want to. And if you don't want to, that's fine. You can make it any way you want to. These are just some suggestions. And we're going to lay our fabric right sides together, right on the edge, right on the edge of that pencil mark that we made. And we're going to sew it right on the paper. And I told you in the first video that you need to have an ironing an ironing surface convenient to your machine because if you don't you're going to be doing a lot of getting up and down and it gets tiring after a while so I've got this ironing board that my husband made for me it's got a big hole right here I need to recover it but it's very convenient I, I actually thinking about getting him to make me one that's only like you know this one is probably 12 inches wide about 15 inches long it'd be more convenient but he actually made this one for me when my sewing shop was a lot smaller and it had hinges on it and it went up against the wall and then when I got ready to use it I pulled it down from the hinges and it had a leg that came down and I had a small iron board in my teeny tiny little sewing shop but I don't have the teeny I don't have the teeny times well I got I still have the shop but I don't sew it anymore and uh, so I, I just use this one for just little little jobs but we're going to take our iron with the steam one of these days I hope to have a big well that's steaming today I tell you that by crackies that was hot I don't know what I did but that is hot it is I've been having trouble with my iron putting out steam but man that got my finger and I about last year year before last I had a ladybug that committed Harry Carey inside of the water reservoir of one of my irons I have two and I don't know if that's been messing up my steam or what has but something has been messing up my steam all right since we've got our two big wide strips down we're going to mirror always we're going to mirror the rest of the time so we're going to take the, the thinner the two inch green put on each side and then we're going to iron again and then we're going to put the two and a half inch um this light color and then we're going to iron again and then we're going to finish up with this print and it doesn't matter as long as you are just make all of your blocks the same all right let's get this one put down this quilt I spent a lot of time out here by myself and I get a lot of thinking done and I was thinking the other day this particular quilt actually makes me think of both of my grandmothers 
in two different, in two totally different ways. My grandmother, that um, my, my daddy's mother, my grandmother, uh, she was very entrepreneurial. She made things over the years. She was widowed in 1955. My grandfather took his own life in 1955. And she never remarried. And she was the most thrifty person I ever knew. And she uh, came up with this idea. I don't know how she came up with it. I wish I had knew the whole story. But I do know the end results. But back in the late 60s and early 70s, she found a local place that made, uh, I don't know if they made jackets, coats, I don't know. But they were, I don't know what they made. I have no idea. I think, it, I, 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 I don't know. I'm afraid to say. All right, we have our two green ones on each side of here. And now we are going to put our little light color one here on each side. But she found a local place that she could go to and buy these small rimlets, rimlets of what well, it was stuff that fell off the cut it, stuff that fell off the cutting table in this factory. And she would go there and I don't know if she bought it by the pound or if they gave it to her. I don't know. I don't know how she bought it. She may have bought it by the pound. She could have bought it by the bag. I don't know. But it was all different colors of naugahyde, which is a another word for vinyl. And it's not the vinyl, not the kind of vinyl we use today. This had like a, a weave or some or like a fabric backing on it. And she brought it home and she would cut it into small strips of probably about two to three inches wide, something like that. And she may have varied that, I don't know. But she came and she would bring it home and she, my aunt worked a job. And so she would help her by they would sit down and cut they had these huge scissors i mean these industrial scissors and they would cut their strips out and they would make these pa side panels just like this on the diagonal that would be well this this is the block sitting this, and they'd be like this and they'd make these panels i don't know that's probably they had different sizes that they made but they, the panels are probably somewhere like maybe six by eight something like that inch and they would sew their strips together in different colors. They might do red, white, and blue. They might do black and brown. They might do uh, white and beige or just all these different color combinations. Now we're going to go back to our um, this print right here. And my aunt would make these panels and she made a whole bunch of them at night. And they had these, these industrial sewing machines that would sew that vinyl. And they would, my aunt would make the panels and then she'd bring them to my grandmother. And my grandmother would make the purses. She made purses. And they had a nice heavy uh, metal zipper. There were no compartments inside of there. They were just a wide open space and you could put just about anything in there. And this was long, long, long before social media or the internet. And they sold those purses strictly by word of mouth and she told me one time she thought that she had sent those purses to all 50 states and so this design right here reminds me of the side the side panels of those purses there were not any prints they were all solids and then she would take the matching vinyl and she would cut the tops and the sides and, and set those set those panels together into making a nice purse and I wished I had one so much. I wished I had the one she made me, but we came home one night and there was um we had one of those chains on the door that you could open the door and go open it like six inches and reach in there with your key and put it up in the bottom of the and then turn it and unlock the chain. And we came home one night, probably from church, and there was three identical purses hanging on the inside of that doorknob, a small, medium, and large child size. Each one of them had a dollar in it, and um, we. Um, uh, it was for me and my sister and my my two sisters and we were absolutely thrilled with it and they were red white and blue i'll never forget that all right the next step that we would do when we, our block is done and it is boy is it sloppy looking look at the back of it how sloppy it is what we're going to do is we'll take it to the cutting table lay our ruler next to the edge don't try not to cut any of your 
all tear away and put it right your ruler around the edge and take your rotary cutter and trim all of these and I just so happen to have one of those already done well I, yes all right so now at this point um, you could embellish I would not em I, you need to wait till you tr do the trimming before you do the embellishing because um, and I'll show you it's just it's easier to work with it it's, it's still stiff and I have got down here anybody that knows me and has known me for any like, length of time knows that I love Rick Rack and I have a huge selection but Rick Rack is not the look we're going for today we're going for more of a Victoria Vic, Victorian look so I got this lace and I got this at Joann's I was shopping around for lace did not realize that lace is very expensive and I do not use lace in my line of work normally and I was shocked at how expensive lace is but they had this lace in like a dollar like a clearance bin and it was a dollar and it is uh, three yards so nine feet and we're gonna lay this right on the edge of our cut our trimmed square and I'll tell you just in a second why you need to do this after it's trimmed. I put a lot of thought into my process. I'm probably overthinking my process sometimes, but I do want it to be just right. And we have our lace, and we're going to trim it off, leave just a tiny, tiny little bit. And the reason we do this before, after it's trimmed is because I do not want the this lace to be cut off even. I'd like to have just a little bit of a tail off each side so that when you put sew your blocks together you're going to be catching that little tail inside and you know keeping it from raveling. So that's why I want to do that way. Then we, we turn our square over and at this point you would have several of these made and every how many you decide you need for your size quilt. Like I said these are 10 inch blocks you would figure a half each seam to sew two of them together and that's the math on doing a um, how to figure out how many you need I would say for probably let me let me do a let me do a queen a queen size is 90 inches by about 105 and you can make your queen as big as you want to but that's the standard and for a 10 inch block to make it 90 inches wide I would go with 10 blocks and that extra 10 inch block would give you um, all of your seam allowances and it would and it would shrink up to close to 90 inches and then to make it long enough I would probably go with 12 so 120 of these wow 120 of these for a king size but you don't have to sit down and and try to do all that in one day or one night. Just set yourself a goal. I'm going to do five tonight. And, and at, at the end of the week, you'll have 35. And at the end of two weeks, you would have 70. And at the end of the next week, you'd have 105. And you're almost done. All right. We, when we sew, when we were sewing these, uh, this on the stabilizer, it was actually perforating our tear away. And it made a nice, clean tear off the back. And there we have a perfect, a perfect um, 10 inch square. And I think it's absolutely, I didn't know if I'd like it with the lace on it or not, but I think it's absolutely gorgeous. And you could even, you could even put a wider lace on here, um, leave the lace off, put the lace on some of them, put the lace on um, a few of them, and you know, or you could put lace in every seam. It's just all up to you. It's all, it's your quilt. You do what you want to with it. Now let's bring up one of our, if I can find it, bring this one up, back up, still got the paper on the back. I don't actually have um, enough of these done yet to um, start tearing the backs off, which you can do those one at a time if you wanted to, or, but yesterday, I had, here it is, 
this large spool of royal blue and I can't find the end of it. Maybe that's it. Oh my, I'm making a mess. But anyway, and you could put you some blue rip rack on this little sucker and put it right down here away from the, I think it looks better down here than it would look next to the blue. I think it looks better away from the blue and you could put yellow on here or green or whichever color you'd like to do. The possibilities are endless. And tonight, maybe before I quit for the day, I, I've got a great idea and I want to try it out for a, a Christmas stocking. And I may do that after after fooling with these stock these um, squares for a little while. I have come up with a great idea. I've done that a million times in my life. Come up with wonderful ideas that didn't work out, but I know this one will. But anyway, I appreciate you watching, and I hope you get your baby quilt made. I hope you make a hundred of them and give them out to all the baby showers and and um, take them to a craft show. Whatever you want to do with them, do as, do as many as you want to. The possibilities are endless. You can even, this square is uh, four inches wide. Uh, this strip is four inches wide, so you can see the little trucks and cars. And then I made this one with narrower strips because the print was really small. And you can put your orange rip rack on there, or I just so happen to have some yellow. I guess I'm a Rick Rack collector. Put the yellow on there. Whatever you want to do. It's completely up to you. I would love for you to post some pictures on my Facebook page, Sonia's Quilts and Embroidery, to show me what you have gotten done. It it makes me happy to see other people learn from from what I show you how to what I show you. And that is one thing I really enjoy doing. I do a teaching. Um, I do not make a dime off of YouTube. I don't even put commercials on my videos because that's not important to me. The important to, thing to me is to teach someone something that I love to do. And, the, and making quilts is something that I truly love to do. It's a passion and it can, it's, uh, I guess, an addiction. But anyway, if you like this video, hit that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment below about your favorite grandma story. Um, I've got many, many of them. Uh, oh, I told you this quilt reminded me of both of my grandmothers. Once upon a time, my big mama, uh, and I've mentioned this before, she made lingerie, she did lingerie type sewing. She made panties and she made um, slips and gowns and stuff like that. Well, one time, my mother didn't start driving until I was like nearly, I was like eight years old when she started driving. So my grandmother, my big mama, lived um, between our house and my daddy's job. So he would, some evenings, he would work 4 to 12, and he would take us over there, and he would drop us off at her house, and then he'd come back and pick us up. We was all, all conked out, so it was a job, but he loaded us up, took us home, unloaded us, and put us to bed. But one night we went over there, and somebody had given big mama a gigantic box of lace, and it was a big ball of mess. It was tangled up. It was a mess. So we all sat around that big ball of of, of lace and um, untangled it, rolled it up in a ball like you do yarn. And I was thinking that I don't know where I'd put that much lace, but it would be fun to have that much lace. Uh, somebody just give you that much lace because, like I said, lace is expensive. I didn't realize how expensive it had gotten. So you can shop around though. Use your coupons. I encourage you to use your coupons. I use them all the time. I watch sales. If it's something that I know that I regularly use and it's on sale, I may not need it, but I go ahead and get it so that I'll have it when I need it at a better price. So I hope you enjoyed this. And like I said, give me your favorite grandma or big mama or granny story down in the comments. I would love to read those. I'll read every one of them. And just let me know all about your grandma. I love grandmas. Love old people too. But anyway, thank you so much. And have a great day. And happy quilting.